The advent of free and easy online tools like PSA's Auction Prices Realized or PWCC's Marketplace Research makes accurate sales data for any graded vintage baseball card accessible to every collector. This is a game changer for those collectors who are interested in making money from buying and selling their cards. But having the information and actually making money are two different things. But what if you had $1,000 to invest in vintage baseball cards? Where would you spend it for the best return on investment? My simplest advice would be to look at the most iconic cards in the hobby and buy the best graded examples you can afford. But let's go a little deeper because there are always qualifiers. First, I would stay away from cards that people label undervalued. Think about it. If a card has been undervalued for the past 50 years, do you think that suddenly collectors will discover it and bump the price up? The Joe Morgan Rookie is one of those cards. From 2016 to 2018, a time when many cards had double-digit gains, the PSA 8 had 0% growth. Second, you have to be mindful of a card's volatility. Cards with very low pop counts can have tremendous fluctuations in price. Here's an example. This 1952 Red Man Stan Musial in a PSA 7 has a pop of 25 and has only traded at auction three times in 10 years. In 2008, the card sold for $1,000. The next time it went to auction was in March 2019, and it only sold for about half that. This brings up another lesson for investors. Stick to mainstream cards that trade often. This means tops are safer than Bowman, regional sets, test releases, or food issues. I also believe in the adage, you make your money when you buy. Track prices and the trends, up or down. Look for cards with good eye appeal. Be patient to find the right card at a good price. A buyer got this card for about 22% below the average selling price on a Friday night eBay auction. That same night, someone else paid $399 on a Buy It Now for essentially the same card. The first buyer has an easier path to profitability. My final piece of advice is don't panic. Prices drop, economies go into recession. Unlike stocks, a high-grade card of a top-tier Hall of Famer won't lose 100% of its value. A few months ago, I did a video about the impact the Great Recession had on the prices of vintage cards. What I found was that the recession did have a downward effect on prices, but it was temporary. The better the grade and the more iconic the card, the less impact the recession had. Just be prepared to wait the market out. Okay, so let's spend that $1,000. The rookie cards of top-tier Hall of Famers seem like a safe bet, but some of them are now so expensive that you could only buy the lowest grades, which I think defeats the purpose. That would knock out Mantle, Mays, Jackie Robinson, Clemente, and Aaron. But it still leaves open many Hall of Famers, like Sandy Koufax, Johnny Bench, Nolan Ryan, Rod Carew, Tom Seaver, Reggie Jackson, Mike Schmidt, and Ken Griffey Jr. The post-rookie cards of Mantle, Mays, Jackie, Clemente, and Aaron seem like strong bets. For Mantle, I would look at the more iconic cards of the 1950s and 60s in a collector grade. This would include the 56, 62, and 69 cards. Mays and Robinson cards are cheaper, so I would look at these 1954 to 1956 examples. With Clemente and Aaron, you can afford second year cards in mid to high grades. This would be the 1955 Aaron and 56 Clemente, both in PSA 7. Other cards I like are the iconic 1957 and 1962 designs. With Clemente, subscribers to this channel already know I like the 1972 and 1973 cards. With Aaron, I'm a big fan of the 1975 Topps card. These last few cards are perfect if you don't have $1,000, as you can get investment-grade examples for much less than that. Now, I'll be the first to admit I've never spent $1,000 on a single card. I'm a social worker. But the principles I've outlined here apply regardless. Buy iconic cards in the best grade you can afford. What cards would you put on the $1,000 list? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and collect what you love.